Dog chews can be a really contentious issue, and today I'm talking all about rawhide chews and jerky dog treats. Should we be giving them to our dog, or are there better things that we can give them? And then my final question today is from Sophia, who writes, can I safely give my dog low treated rawhide? So chemical hair removal, but no bleaching or splitting. Um, and what about pizzle sticks and other dried meats or chews? How about softer bones such as lamb ribs? Well, I'll take that last one to start with. So softer bones, you know, they are unlikely to cause fractured teeth than um, the, the weight bearing kind of long bones of our kind of cows and sheep. Um, but you know, if they're raw, then they're still going to be an infection risk. Um, and really, if you, you know, you're thinking of feeding raw or giving bones, then check out my free ebook over in the Knowledge Vault, which discusses whether this risk is something to worry about. Um, you know, in a much greater detail. Now, if instead actually you're cooking these, so we're not, we don't have that risk of infection with raw food, then the kind of the ribs they're still going to be brittle and there's still going to be a chance of blockage and perforation so you know there's they're not something that i would tend to recommend at all now rawhide chews let's move on to those so they're processed skin um generally of of cows but could be of sheep as well um, and they're typically a byproduct actually of the leather industry so not the meat industry of the leather industry and there's various ways that um the rawhides are produced but generally they do involve a lot of rather scary chemicals um you know, to separate out the hide layers, to preserve them, to cure them, um, to flavour them and colour them as well. Um, you know, so that, that's definitely something to think about. Now, um, Sophia's talking about um, low treated raw hide. You know, it depends on what's used to treat that, um, you know, to, to kind of to remove the, the hair, you know, what's used to, to preserve it, to kind of keep it fresh-ish before it's then processed. So, you know, there's quite a lot there. You know, and that's really going to depend on the on the source and um, on the specific manufacturer as well. So if it's um, come from a long way, so if it's kind of shipped in from from China, which is where a lot of them are produced, then really they are probably going to have had a lot of chemicals to to process them and to get them to you in the first place. But if it's a local manufacturer, then maybe you're you know more aware um, of what's going into them, and you can make that decision for yourself. Now, if we think of raw hide chews in general, apart from kind of all of these chemicals and things, you know, what are the other potential problems with feeding them because a lot of dogs will really like them well they do still have a risk of obstruction so I spoke about the risk of bones getting kind of swallowed and then stuck in the intestines but rawhide chews definitely have that risk as well um, you know really especially if large chunks are swallowed so this is going to be more of a concern if your dog is a real power chewer so if you've got um, you know a dog who's got a really powerful chew they really go for it when they get a chew and they're able to bite off big chunks um, you know even whole ends so if we think of a rawhide uh, chew a lot of them will have a knotted um, kind of a knotted end to make them look a little bit like a, a kind of cartoon bone if you like. Now if a dog's able to bite that off and then swallow it then there's a real risk that that could be um, causing an obstruction later on. So it could get into the stomach um, and then squeeze its way into the intestines where it becomes stuck. Now even if that doesn't happen and it stays in the stomach it can take a long time for these um, these raw hides to get broken down into the stomach and so that can cause um, long-term irritation, um, you know vomiting, diarrhea, all that kind of thing as well. So you know that's definitely something to think about if you've got a power chewer. Now if we then move on to kind of raw meats and jerky treats, well there have been concerns with some jerky treats actually causing kidney failure and death in some dogs. Now the cause of this is unknown, it really does seem to involve treats that have been imported from China. Now we got similar things when there was a melamine contamination in some pet foods back in um, 2007 I think it was. Um, that hasn't been specifically implicated here and there may be other, other problems as well that are causing this kidney failure. But you know I think it just highlights that you know with a lot of these things there's potentially something that we need to consider that may make it dangerous. Now that's not to say all of these um, treats are dangerous by any stretch of the imagination. Again if you've got a locally produced um, you know kind of minimal chemically produced uh, a dried treat that you, you want to feed then fantastic. Now you can even make kind of jerky treats and things yourself if you're um, you know if you're that way inclined and then you know exactly what's gone into it. Now as an alternative to all these things you know what can you give your dog instead just to keep them entertained, um, to keep them um, happy and to give them a, a kind of a re rewarding treat well consider kongs so the kind of the big rubber um, rubber toys that you can then stuff with food or you can smear with a little bit of peanut butter or something like that to really cause your dog to kind of work to chew away um, and to get a bit of a tasty treat reward as well um, you can use snuffle mats uh, you could use food puzzles um, licky pads so there's a number of other things that we can use that um, 
you know, will keep your dog entertained. It will provide them with a, a food treat, a tasty kind of reward, but will also provide a good level of mental stimulation as well, which is very important for the well-being of our dog. So, you know, rather than, you know, potentially raw hides or some of these other treats, especially if they've come from, you know, uh, maybe more uncertain, less local sources, um, you know, really consider whether they are the best thing to be feeding your dog. And then the other thing to think if we are giving food treats is, you know, treats uh, are great to give, but, um, you know, rewards for our dogs um, doesn't have to be food. It could be just your attention. So rather than giving them a, a, a something tasty to reward them or to give them a treat, you know, give them your attention instead. So play with them, take them for a walk. Um, also consider, you know, how much you're giving, because if you're giving a lot of the treats, then, you know, the chances of obesity is going to be much higher. And obesity is a massive problem in our pet population that has a really significant knock-on effect in their general health, their well-being, and also their life expectancy. So, you know, that's just another thing to think about when it comes to giving treats to our dogs. You've been watching the Dr. Alex Answers video podcast. Remember to subscribe and head over to DrAlexAnswers.com for any links, downloads, and get your question answered.